Welcome back to the mission convention for our second session. I'm Eugene Pruitt, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about the work that we do. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you would bless our second session as you have the first, that you would teach each one that's listening how to reach someone for you. I ask for that gift in the name of Jesus. Amen. A friend of mine was traveling on vacation, and when she was in the mall, she made friends with a a teenager that she met there, and they exchanged numbers, and that teenager began writing to her. Well, when the teenager got home, her name is Ellie, she shared the story with her sister, uh, Monica. Monica was so excited to get that, to see that her, there was an American friend, really it was an Italian friend, but she was marrying an American, that she asked if she could have the contact, and she wrote to that friend. And to make the story short, that Italian-American girl and this Muslim girl began a correspondence that became a very deep friendship. It became so deep that Monica began to ask about Christianity. She began to learn, and she began to pray, and she began to like the Bible. And that's when the Italian lady asked me if my wife and I would be willing to meet with Monica. So, of course, we said yes. And before long, we had had a meal together. We'd studied Daniel 2 and 7 together. And uh, Monica ended up studying the prophets. She learned. uh, An evangelist from America came and baptized her there in her own country. And she was excited to join God's remnant church. But it wasn't without cost. Because of Monica's uh, baptism and conversion, she had to flee her family. For a while, she even left her country. And because of the repercussions that came from that, a donor that offered to give us five acres of land withdrew the offer after we had already invested substantial money in developing it. And uh, other things came out of it. But my wife, as she became close friends with Monica, she said to me, you know, Eugene, it's worth it. To give Monica a chance to live forever, it's worth the loss of the land, the loss of the money, the loss of uh, co-workers. It's worth whatever we lose whatever we have to lose to keep someone for Jesus. Hey, that's true today. I hope when you're traveling on vacation that you'll make contacts for Jesus, that you'll share something, that you'll get something going. But let's talk right now a bit about resources. And you can pray for Monica. Her ordeal is not over. Even now, she's under investigation by police. Uh, Let's talk about resources. I can direct you to a series of Bible studies designed for Muslims. Uh, We have this series in uh, Farsi and Urdu and Bengali and German and English and Arabic, working on Turkish, working on Mandarin or Chinese. Uh, We have it in Malay, working on Indonesian. Started working in Russian, but haven't made much progress that way. Wishing we could make some progress in French. We have these studies in a number of languages. And in some languages, we've even developed videos. If you'd go to mengapa.org, you'd see a series of uh, videos there that are Malay and English by a German speaker. And uh, the purpose of these videos and these studies, they're designed for, um, for delivery by WhatsApp. I gotta be sure to start my, start my memory because, I mean my clock, because and I went seven minutes over on the last one. You want to be sure that you get these Bible studies. So how do you get them? You can write me. My email address is I-E-A-T, that's I-E-A-T, I-E-A-T, senior, at gmail.com, I-E-A-T, S-E-N-I-O-R, at gmail.com, I-E-A-T, senior, at gmail.com. Write and ask, and I'll be happy to send them to you. And hey, you can share them with whoever you want, anytime you want, however you want. You can just get the message out there. 
These are ideal. And I'm going to give you an idea of how I share them by WhatsApp or Messenger or by email. Let's say that you've just made friends with your taxi driver. You have his number so you can contact him the next time you're in the city so you don't have to go through Uber and he'll get 20% more that way. Uh, so you're, you've, you have his contact. Now I'm going to write to him. I'm going to say, uh, Abdullah, I really have enjoyed talking to you when I was in your car the other day. I found a series of video scripts that use the prophets that Christians and Muslims have in common. And I find them amazing. I've learned so much. Uh, I'm attaching the first couple here. If you like them, let me know. I'll send you more. Tell me what you think and send it. Do you know, when you talk about it like that, tell me what you think. And when you say, I found it amazing, it helped me. Those kind of phrases really take the edge off of sharing. If I say, this is going to help you find the gospel, there goes a barrier. But if I say, this has really helped me, it's been amazing, there goes down a barrier. Uh, so ask, and you can use them. Uh, you can find other resources. There are many things. Uh, Ravi, Ravi, Ravi Zacharias died uh, this week, and uh, he made a number of resources that he used. Uh, one of his good friends did the same. But what I want to say is the biggest resource you need, the one that I noticed that works the best, is personal friendship. And I think I said this last session, I'll say it again. Quickly invite a new friend to your house to eat. Cook for them. Have your wife cook for them. Or if you're afraid to cook, take them out to a restaurant. Be sure you invite them to eat before you are invited to eat so that You'll get over that hump of, of your special dietary needs. I was in India a number of years ago uh, visiting with an important man. He was a, a Muslim man who owned a university. His family owned it with their own money. And uh, in his little office, his workers were fast. I mean, it was like they're almost jogging. They're walking so fast, doing the things they had to do. Everything was really moving. It was a beautiful thing to see right there, what was being done with all that money. And while I was talking to him, he said some things in Telugu, and in just a few moments, my wife and I each had a hot glass of tea, and he had one too. And maybe you've heard some things about tea in, in the Muslim communities, but I'll tell you, I didn't drink mine, because I don't drink tea. I don't drink coffee. I don't use alcohol. I don't eat pork. And... Uh, but it was my first time, this is 14 years ago, and he, no, it's not, it's 11 years ago. Anyway, it was my first time talk, dealing with a situation like that, and I thought, I'll just leave the tea until it's time for us to go. I didn't realize that he can't sip his until I sip mine first. So eventually he said, the tea is getting cold. And that's when I said, you know, Muhammad, the same way that you don't eat pork because of your great respect for God, for the same reason I don't eat pork because of my respect for God, and for the same reason I don't smoke because of my respect for God, and for the same reason I don't use caffeine because of my respect for God, and consequently, I don't drink tea or coffee. And when I said that to him, his eyes caught the understanding and he said some things in Telugu, and in just a couple minutes, Heidi and I each had a tall glass of warm buffalo milk, which we drank. And thankfully, it didn't taste bad. In fact, it, it tasted good. What I want to say is, don't lower your standards in evangelism. Use your standards and leverage them to show that you're serious about your religion. Only serious religion impresses people. Secularized religion never impresses anyone. So I want to tell you another story, and then we'll get to that Bible study of Revelation chapter 9. Uh, I was in my little office in Asia when I got an uh, email from Germany. A lady there said, would you visit Roji? It turns out Roji was uh, missing a Bible he had when he was young. He had left it behind when he went to another country to work, and he missed it, and he went on YouTube to try to find truth. 
I'm telling you, that's not a place for you to go to find truth, but Roji did it. And when he went to YouTube to find truth, he found an Indonesian lady who had been a radicalized Muslim sharing her testimony about how she became a Seventh-day Adventist. Wow, that was just what he wanted. He was so glad to find it. And when he saw it, he contacted her. And when he did that, well, she contacted me. And so I flew to where he was, far away from where I lived, sat down with him, made a secret appointment. We talked about the gospel, talked about smoking. I gave him a Bible in a language he could enjoy. And we talked about what he would have to do before we would baptize him. Of course, he'd have to quit smoking because smoke, uh, baptism represents a death to the old life. And I told him that we wouldn't want to baptize him with such an obvious evidence that the old life wasn't dead yet. So Roji made progress. Oh, he lost his job over the Sabbath. He lost his wife over Christianity. She divorced him. Uh, he lost his ability to stay in that other country and had to go back to his own country. And Roji, when he lost his income from his job, he lost his ability to help his children in university. So I asked some friends in America to help, and they helped with some money to help keep them in school. But I never sent it because they hadn't enrolled yet. So I hadn't sent it. And I was talking to him several times a day, every day, sometimes by messenger, sometimes by email, sometimes by WhatsApp. And on June 28, 2018, Roji disappeared. I think I know. Roji was killed by his family in an honor killing. I sent an investigator to his town, someone that knew him as a child. The way the family treated that investigator, it all adds up. I've put two and two together. Uh, Roji, if he was uh, alive, would certainly have contacted me for that $1,200. He knew that I had it, that I had never sent it. And somehow his children knew about it and asked me to give it to them anyway, even though Roji was gone. And uh, they were very, anyway, Roji has been killed. Now, what do you think about that? I say, praise God. A soul has been garnered into his kingdom. And we live in an age when this is going to be more common. In the book of Acts, the people weren't afraid of dying. And as long as we're afraid of dying, we're not going to get the work done. I was in Nairobi just a year and a half ago, and I talked to the, the men there at the convention where I was speaking. I said, listen, you have right here the state of Kisi, where like one in four people are Adventist or used to be Adventist in the state of Kisi. And then you have right here in Nairobi uh, hundreds of thousands of Somalis and zero of them, maybe you have more than a million there, zero of them are Adventist. Why is it that when missionaries come to Kenya, they go to Kisi? Why is it when they go to Asia, they go to the Philippines? Why is it when they go uh, to the Americas that they go to Guyana or Jamaica? I'm telling you, let's not go to Peru Let's not go to uh, Colombia, not go to Rwanda, not go to Ghana. The countries I've been naming off for you, the average ratio of Adventist to population is like 1 to 20, 1 to 50, 1 to 80. But you know, in West Malaysia, where I live right now, it's 1 to 5,000. In Somalia and Yemen and Saudi and Iran, it's worse. But I'm saying if you're going to go on a mission trip, how about going to a place where the ratio is worse than your home country? But anyway, I'm off to a different topic there. Uh, what I want to tell you is that I'm not ashamed of the gospel that gives people courage to die for their faith. So let me get my Bible and we'll have a study. I don't know if you have a Bible with you, but I'm going to tell you why I don't use the Quran. Turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, uh, you know, typically in Revelation and in Daniel, nations are represented by beasts. 
So you know about the ram and the dragon and the leopard and the lion. But when you come to representing uh, the Muslim hordes, that is the, the great collection of Muslim fighters that were loosely organized for so long before Muhammad II, uh, the Bible rep represents them as a swarm of locusts. And I want to read you a bit about what it says here. It says, Then out of the smoke locusts came from the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And it says, uh, verse... Verse 10, they had tails like scorpions, and there, were, there st were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. Where was the sting? It was in their tails. What does this stinger in the tail of these locusts, the scorpion-like stinger on the back of the locust, what does it represent? Well, the Bible gives us quite a plain answer. You can find that in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. It says for, excuse me, verse 15. The elder and honorable, he is the head. That's like Jesus, the head of the body. The prophet who teaches lies, he is the tail. That's like that dragon in Revelation 12 that gathered the stars with his tail. How did Satan cause the angels to fall? That was with lies, with deception. And how did the uh, Turkish soldiers cause darkness? It's with a false prophet. And uh, let's just talk a bit right now about the Quran. I believe in being honest. Uh, having integrity, when we talk about the holy books of other people, I want to treat the Quran with respect in many ways. It is a book recognized as holy by a billion people. But I read it carefully in English, more than one translation. And here is what I found. The Quran teaches an eternal burning hell. More than a score of times, it does it in great detail. It talks about how God will create new skin on people who, who their skin burned up so that they can feel pain again, and he'll do that again and again for eternity. It talks there about the chain that will hold them and about how when they cry out for mercy, what will happen. And anyway, there are horrific descriptions about the Quran in, I mean, about hell in the Quran. It's, it's very clear there. It says more than 20 times it's going to be forever, eternity. And the Quran is very strong that Jesus is not the Son of God. Very strong that God has no Son. And the Quran says plainly that good deeds cancel bad deeds. You know, the good Catholic idea of merit, the, the Buddhist idea of merit, the Hindu idea of kar karma, it's the Muslim idea also, that good deeds cancel bad deeds. But try that when you're before the judge. Tell him that even though you stole something last week, you haven't stolen anything in the four days since then, so he ought to let you off. Or that you gave flowers to his wife, so he ought to let you off. No, it doesn't work that way. Good deeds don't cancel out bad deeds. In the Quran, you have stories that teach plainly that the end justifies the means. And what I'm trying to tell you, if you want to read more about this, if you do a Google search for Fulcrum 7, the Quran for Seventh-day Adventist, you'll find a pretty decent article that goes through these things. Fulcrum 7 is the site that had the article. The article was there maybe two years ago uh, by a, a pseudonym, I'm sure. The, the, it's, the title of the article is The Quran for Seventh-day Adventist. And I think you'll find there why 
I cannot use the Quran as an authority when I deal with the Muslim friends. You know, in the Quran, it has the story of the fall of Lucifer three times. And that story is Lucifer's version of it. In the story of the Quran, God asks Lucifer to bow down to one that was just like him. In fact, it's Adam there. He's asked to bow down to one that was created like he was created, one that is the same level of being in the universe. And Lucifer refused to bow down to that, that one just like him. And because he would not bow down, God cursed him and he became Iblis, Satan. Yeah, that's in the Quran three times. So what I'm trying to say to you is when you're, when you're out to reach these people, it's not difficult. Be sure you pray. Be sure you make friends. Be sure you share some food with them. Be sure you talk about uh, how God has answered your prayers and about your own experience with God. That share the studies that in their home language, if you can find them that way, ones that would be interesting to them. Uh, do what you can. But I don't think you need to study the Quran to reach Muslims. I don't think you need to use it to reach them. Now let me tell you another story. My wife and I were in the capital city of a country in Asia, and I was visiting the Chinese embassy in that capital, and they refused to help us. And after the Chinese embassy, I had an appointment to speak that evening, Friday evening, at a refugee church, uh, Chin Refugees. Uh, that's from the uh, western part of Myanmar, northwestern part of Myanmar, the Chin and Zomi people. So my wife and I were walking through the capital using my phone to show us where to cross and overpasses. It was several kilometers. But in making my plan to go that way, there was something I did not think through very well. That is... Google Maps is highly battery intensive. And before I got to the destination, when I still had a half kilometer to go, and I'd never been walking there before in my life, I realized, Heidi, I told my wife, Heidi, my, our phone is going to go dead here soon. So we, we got a little scrap of paper that we found, and we scribbled some directions to try to make it once the phone went dead, and the phone did go dead, and we did... We did get there to the block where the refugee church was, but, but the block was a, a large collection of businesses in a, in a row, one building with many business entrances at the base of it, and there was no way to know which of these buildings was the place I was speaking. And my phone was dead, so I couldn't call anyone and we were stymied. And anyway, I found there a little shop, and I told the guy, I'll pay you money if you'll let me charge my phone. He said, sure, and he hooked it right up to his charger, and we made friends. His name is Rajan, and it turns out Rajan knew where the church was because the church uses his copy shop as a, to copy their bulletins. And I got Rajan's uh, contact information, because Rajan wouldn't take any money for charging my phone. And I spoke at my evening meeting, but I kept up with Rajan. Later, Rajan bought the Great Controversy. And later, he began to translate the studies into Bengali. And I'll tell you that even today, Rajan is still translating and learning. But he hasn't become a Christian yet. Rajan is struggling. On one hand, he, he loves truth. He's a very kind man. On the other hand, he doesn't want to lose everything. Would you please pray for Rajan? He's like the not quite rich young ruler. And let's pray that he will come all the way. Because you know, if we don't bring people all the way, we don't bring them where they can go to heaven. I can't lower the standard for Rajan and say that, that now he's there. We have to bring our contacts up. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. I was walking in Indonesia when I saw a, a man, and I tried to talk to him. 
I call him Noble Farmer because he was a farmer and he had such a pleasant, intelligent look on his face. But Noble Farmer and I don't share a common language. And we couldn't communicate anything but hand signals. So I passed him by. And on my daily walks, I saw him a few times. And then one lady asked Heidi and I if we could talk to her. She wanted to talk about boys and marriage. And, well, my wife and I have some things we can share, but I was done with that conversation before that girl was. And then I realized we're on the same road as Noble Farmer. And this girl knows English and his language. I said, hey, can we change the topic? Can you help me talk to someone? And we went and visited Noble Farmer, and we agreed to set up Stop Smoking seminars right there in his own home for him and his son and his son-in-law. They all three smoke. They all three want to quit. And I'm suggesting to you that where you go on the streets, in the fields, at work, Would you please be on the lookout for for Noble Farmer? Read people's faces. Look for kind faces. Look for Rajan, that one that wouldn't accept money when he did me a favor. God will highlight the character of people that he's working with in front of you, and that's your opportunity to say, hey, I appreciate that. Hey, thank you. And to go and say, let's keep in touch. I'd like to to, uh, go out and eat with you sometime. And do what you can. Of course, probably I don't need to say here, guys, witness to guys, girls, witness to girls. Uh, you know, be careful in all those things. So I have just a few minutes left. Let me just look here at my notes because I'm sure I've missed some important things. Are you looking for a quick harvest? Are you looking to finish the sowing? I'm saying let's finish the sowing. Let's use the profits we have. Let's use our opportunities. Let's share the studies. Let's bring people higher and let's come higher ourselves. And I'm sure that if we'll do that, that God can use each one of you to reach one, two, three, four, five people of the Muslim faith and bring them all the way to become good, solid, daring Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. And if you like those stories, there's more where these came from. Uh, But be careful where you share these stories because these stories could possibly get some people in trouble. Let me have a prayer with you and we'll close our second session. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you will bless us, that you would help those who are listening to find opportunities to reach their neighbors, their friends, their co-workers, the students, the refugees near them. Finish the work you've started, I ask, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, don't go away. Come back immediately. There's going to be a live Q&A session. Click that link for Zoom that you see connected to this and uh, join us for the Q&A. You can ask any question you want. Maybe there are ideas I started, I didn't finish them. Ask them, we'll get a chance to finish. God bless you. Bye-bye.